so three years ago, I, uh, three years and three days ago, because the initial accident was three days before my amputation, I was in an uh, onset accident. I'm an executive producer, writer, and uh, director of television shows. And I was uh, producing the finale episode for season one of my show, LA's Finest when a car stunt went wrong and a car went out of control and it hit the shipping container that was supposed to be a barricade between Video Village where all of the producers and directors stand and the um, stunt and that shipping container crushed my foot. Um, beside me was my writing partner. It also went on his foot, um, but he actually, he broke two or three toes. Uh, he was fine. Um, though we both share the emotional scars of uh, that uh, traumatic event. Uh, so three years, three days ago, my foot is crushed. I'm pinned under a shipping container on set for 15 to 20 minutes until the paramedics can arrive. When they arrive, uh, I, you know, I'm in lots of pain, but I'm still sort of with it. And I can hear them saying, uh, just make sure you hold the foot. And the, when I heard them say the foot, not his foot, I knew immediately that ain't good. Um, but I'm very stubborn. Uh, and uh, in the ambulance, going to the hospital, I tell the, I tell the paramedics, do not take my foot. I, I have four children. I need to dance with my daughter at her wedding. I coach all of my kids in Little League. I need my foot. You can't take my foot. Then I, you know, succumb to the pain. I'm sure I passed out. It's uh, kind of a blur. But as the story goes, when I arrived at the hospital, the doctor said, we're going to need to amputate this foot. The paramedics told them, he said, no, you may not amputate the foot. I woke up. The doctor said, hey, can we cut off your foot? I said, no, you need to call my wife. I need to call my wife. I finally got on the phone with my wife. And what I said to her was, don't let them take my foot. Um, and so uh, I was put in a helicopter from the UCLA hospital down in Long Beach, where I was, and flown to UCLA in Westwood, where they had a different surgical team, and they brought in the, the trauma surgeon that was the guy, and he came and he put my foot back together. Um, so it was, I think, nine hours of surgery. Uh, they reassembled the foot. And uh, then I was in the hospital for another couple of days. And on the third day, I had undergone hyper, hyperbaric chamber treatments. Um, there was, you know, there, there was really barely any pulse in the foot, but I was starting to get blood infections. Um, and so, so, you know, I was getting blood transfusions and things were getting very scary. And my wife and I had a conversation and uh, she said, this doesn't look like it's working. And I said, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's working either. Uh, and uh, so my wife and I talked about what, you know, where we, where we stood in that moment. And the, the, we together came to the decision that, A, let's not risk your life over this. B, what the doctors are now saying is that even if the foot recovers, it's going to be problematic for the rest of your life. I didn't sign up to sit on the sidelines of my life. I have a very full and active life. And so the decision came, cut it off. Uh, my wife called the doctors in. Uh, meanwhile, I, my youngest son is five months old. My wife is still breastfeeding. She's still pumping and she's calling doctors in and she's telling them, here's the deal. It's time to cut the foot off. And of course, these doctors who spent nine hours reassembling the foot wanted to, they said, no, well, it's, uh, it's going to work. This wait, this wait is going to work. And uh, my wife and I had decided, and so my wife was very clear, uh, no, we're going to cut it off now. And so they called the surgeon. He looked at photos and he said, yeah, you know what? You're right. We're going to have to amputate. Uh, so that was three years ago today. Uh, my foot was amputated. Um, three years ago tomorrow, I woke up in the hospital with uh, a below the knee amputation of my right leg. Uh, and a uh, doctor came in, it was the, the prosthetist that I would be working with later. And uh, the um, occupational therapist came in and everyone came in and on my bed, I saw uh, a packet from the amputee coalition. And uh, there was uh, someone there and I don't remember which person it was that, that said, just, you're gonna need to look through this. 
It has a lot of information. Um, you know, you're going to be okay. And so I talked to the occupational therapist. I talked to the physical therapist. I talked to the prosthetist about how things were going to work down the line. And then I read the welcome packet to the world of being an amputee. Um, and it was very scary, not the packet, but that day. Uh, but one of the things that made it less scary was knowing, and, and in the packet, uh, almost immediately it says, here is the number of amputees, and here are the number of people that at some point in their life will become amputees. And so immediately I understood, well, my life's not over, it's going to be different, and here is this group of people that I've now entered. I am now in a different group of people, and let me look into that. And so that is the story, A, of the amputation, B, of how I came to know the Amputee Coalition. Because we don't tend to think about those with limb loss and, and limb differences until it happens to us or someone that we know or someone that we love, uh, but we should all be aware of what the other people in our society are going through and what needs they may have just to get through their day. Um, so it's important that we all speak up, that we all try and, and get a little bit of awareness and a little bit of representation um, out there so that there is at least a base level of knowledge of what other people are going through. And, and with that knowledge will come empathy and compassion and hopefully policy change and workplace change and all of the things that, that happen when you just take a second to, to see the people around you. It's really hard. That's, that's the thing. I think people see amputees and, you know, I coach my kids little league still. I do it, you know, I do it with my prosthetic. Um, I went back to work fairly, you know, fairly quickly after surgery. I directed another episode of television. I, I did another one last year. I'm going to go do one in a few months. Um, think, you know, my job requires being on your feet all day. And I do that. And so people get the idea like, all right, well, it's over. Well, he had it cut off, but he's got that prosthetic. He puts it on in the morning and he goes off and, and goes about his day. And the thing that I want people to know, not for me, but for when they meet another amputee, when they uh, encounter anyone with limb loss, uh, is that they're still on their journey, no matter how far away from their accident or trauma or surgery or diabetes or whatever, it was, they're still on the journey of limb loss. It doesn't get easy. You get used to it, but it never gets easy. It is always difficult, even when it looks easy. So I think that's the thing that you know, people with all of their limbs often overlook is that that person is still in the trauma of having lost a limb. It's just a different trauma now. <laughs>